Okay, week number two. So I'm multitasking here, I'm making candles, and I'm going to make some broth. So I had all these little scraps in my freezer. I'm not going to use them all. These are as asparagus um, bottoms. These are just random peelings, and then I had started a second one. So I'm going to put all of these in, into my little pot, and I just have my my little four quart here, and actually that's going to be a bit too much, so I'm just going to put three quarters of it in because I want to put a little bit of this asparagus in. Now I'm not putting all the asparagus in, just some of it because I don't want it to taste like asparagus soup. So I'll be right back. i got to cut this open. Alright, so I don't want this to taste like asparagus soup, but it'll give a good flavor to it. I want, it to, uh, I want to make a lentil soup. I have plenty of lentils in my freezer, or not in my freezer, in my stash. So I'm just going to put a couple handfuls in there. And this is pretty full. And then I'm going to cook that in the Instapot. And then all this, all this will get put in the compost. And then I will make the lentil soup after I get the broth made. So I'll be back in a little bit when the broth is done and I start to make my lentil soup. So I have this nut mill that I've had for a long time. And this is great for baking walnuts, you know, grinding them up. And I lost the top to it, so I had a random top. And this was one from a, a glass uh, tumbler that the tumbler broke. So I saved the top, so sometimes you can mix and match. But this thing does a great job grinding nuts. And I have a bunch of things here, surprise, surprise, that I want to create something with. So here I have uh, apples that I cooked the other day. I thickened them a little bit. I didn't thicken them quite enough, so I have some cornstarch on top. I have a box of gluten-free cake mix that I've had for quite a while. It's yellow cake, so I'm going to use that. And I want to make a dump cake. I don't have any apple pie spice, but I have pumpkin pie spice, so I'm going to use that. And uh, I want to, of course do something different because that's me. I want to add some quick oats to the cake mix so that it's more like a heartier oat type of crumble thing. So I'm going to give that a try and uh, that's what I'm making for dessert for this week. Alright, so I thickened this up with a little more cornstarch. I stirred it in. I'm going to add some of these walnuts that I ground up actually to the apples, maybe half of it, because the other half I want to put in the cake part. So all together this was maybe, oh, a third of a cup of nuts. So I'm just going to mix that in, and I'm also going to add some of this pumpkin pie spice. Now these apples, I did uh, put cinnamon and sugar in here when I first cooked them, and they were just apples that were starting to get a little soft, so I wanted to use those up. So I'm just going to put a little sprinkle of this in there, and then I'm going to put some in with the uh, cake mix, because I don't want this to be like too much cinnamon, but I wanted to add a little bit of the pumpkin pie spice. So that's what that looks like. And in here, I put the gluten-free cake mix, and it's just something I had. I, I went through a gluten-free stage to try and see if some of my issues were from that, but it wasn't. So I still have some hanging around. So I put about three quarters of a cup of um, quick cook oats in with this. 
So now in here I'm going to put maybe, oh, to taste, half a teaspoon, teaspoon of the pumpkin pie spice. Spice it up a little bit, right? What's the worst that can happen? It won't be as tasty as you think it would. So I'm going to mix that in. And I'm going to put this in a greased pan and bake it in the oven. And I'll be back when I'm ready to do that. Another thing that I like to add to my bakery, now I'm not a baker. I don't even pretend to be. I cook better than I bake. But I like to add some lemon peel or orange peel. It, it just gives your bakery a nice fresh flavor. I, I just like it. So, and if um, you use a lot of lemons, dry the peels and um, make your own lemon peel. I've done that before too. So I put a little bit in the apples and I put a little bit in the topping. So I have a greased pan here and I have a small pan because I want to make this in the toaster oven. But I guess you could use a 9 by 13, whatever you have. And I'm just cooking by the seat of my pants here like I usually do. So I'm hoping this is good. I, I think at least it'll be edible because, you know, it's, it's apples and cinnamon and I can't mess that up too much. So I'm going to spread this on the bottom of the pan. <clears throat> and if you have a lot of fruit hanging around that uh, is going to go bad, and you have cake mix around, try making a dump cake out of it. You could use pears or apples or, you know, any, any fruit like that. Um, you can mix them. You could even use berries, stick berries in there. So <clears throat> that's what that looks like. And then I put some nuts in here, the cake mix pie filling, or not the pie filling, the pumpkin spice, and I'm just going to put this on top. And I'm going to spread it evenly over the top of the cake. And really, you can't get any easier than this, and if you want it to be really easy, you just use it as it is. You don't have to add anything else to it. Just use it as it is. Plain yellow cake is good. Spice cake would be good with um, with this, with the apples. You can use pumpkin pie filling. You can use all kinds of things to make a dump cake. Now, I don't know how this is going to turn out with the gluten-free cake mix. Maybe good, maybe terrible. But, uh, and then what I'm going to do is just put butter on the top of this, and I'll be back in a couple minutes when I get the butter. All right, I'm going to sprinkle the rest of these walnuts over the top. And then I melted some butter. I hope this is good with the gluten-free cake mix. Like I said, I've had it before with regular cake mix and it's delicious, but I'm not sure how this gluten-free cake mix is going to turn out. So here I have a whole stick of melted butter that I'm going to pour over the whole cake. Now I've seen it done where people will just put pats of butter all over the top but I wanted to moisten this cake mix because, like I said, I don't know what it's going to do. So there you go. I hope this doesn't boil over because it's pretty full. Uh, you'd be better off to use a 9 by 13 pan, but that will not fit in my toaster oven. So I'll be back when this is done and I'll show you how it turned out. Alright, so here is my dump cake. It looks good and it's really hot because it just came out of the oven. I'm just going to taste a little tiny corner here because it needs to cool. It's extremely hot. 
So I just want a little tiny bite. And it looks good. So hopefully I don't burn my mouth here. I'll give that a minute. And then here for breakfast, I just have a ciabatta roll. I have half an avocado and I'm going to get some tomato and I'm going to have avocado toast because I need to use up my avocados. I'm going to have that for breakfast today. All right, here goes, I'm going in. Mmm, it's delicious. Mm hmm very good. All right, I'll be back later when I make my soup. Bake at 350, and we'll see. Bake at 45 to 50 minutes. So for breakfast, I'm having my avocado toast with Roma tomatoes. I season my avocado, it's half an avocado, I put about a quarter teaspoon of lemon pepper in there and depending on if you want some pepper or whatever um, I smash that up and then on top of the tomato I put some garlic salt I also put some just garlic powder in with my avocado and if you like it a little spicy you can add some franks or some sriracha or whatever it is you like but it's an easy peasy tasty breakfast all right well while i'm waiting for my cake and my uh, broth to finish i'm multitasking here which i am not good at multitasking but i've got it going on here so um i melted a couple candles here and these are not scented so now what I want to do is I, I've had these forever this one is uh, wax melt and it's a uh, red velvet cake so I'm going to add a whole um, thing of this to this candle because the candle is sort of the same color not that that matters even if you come up with a brown candle it's still functional so I'm just going to put that in and melt it because I do like scented candles. And then here I have some little random schnibbles of candle there. And I have some here. And I want to melt these to put on top of this. Once this hardens, I'm going to melt these and put these on top and it'll be multi-layered. So these candles were scented, so I don't need to put more scent in those. But um, I wanted to show you these wood wicks. These little clips are reusable. And I did put two of them together because this is my first time trying these out. And I figured that this candle is just about the right size for these. Now if you want to, you can even make like little tea lights and things out of these just by breaking them off because the the kit that I got has 180 pieces so and you can get these in all kinds of sizes on Amazon so I'm going to let that melt and then I'm going to put this in there and let it cool okay so this wax is all melted and I'm going to take my little wooden thing here, make sure it's straight. And I'm just going to place this right in the middle of my candle. And if you need to, you can always put something on top. I like to use just bamboo skewers and just so it doesn't fall over. But this seems to be doing okay. So I'm going to let this harden now. And then I'm going to melt the rest of the wax that I have and make it come up higher. And I'll have a beautiful candle and basically just a couple cents for the wick. And the wax was free that I would have just thrown out had I not made this. So I'm hoping this burns okay. I Like I said, I put two of the wicks in 
So we'll see. It's a new new thing for me. So if you don't have one of those candle making holders that keep the wick in the center, uh, before I got one of those, I just took two skewers and taped them together, not real tight, just left a little space in between, and this works great. So I'll, I'll just put the wick in here. And then you can just lay that on top and it'll keep your wick centered. And that works for this and it also works for uh, waxed, just regular wicks. So I wanted to show you my homemade wine that I made. Um, Paw Paw over at Doing It Cheap, I think his channel is. Um, he has a tutorial on that. And I did this on 113, so it's been um, it's been cooking for a while. And I kept this in my linen in my closet, and where it was dark, and it's pretty much stopped bubbling now. So I'm really anxious to give it a taste. It smells wonderful. This one is a berry blend, and it has to be 100% juice. But I'm going to give it a little taste, see if it's palatable. Just a little bit, because it's only 10.47 in the morning. So it looks good. It smells wonderful. Here we go. Oh, that's good. It's really good. Excellent. So, if you like wine, and wine is a little too expensive for you, get yourself some yeast. I have a video somewhere. I'll try and find it. If I do, I'll link it below. On making your own wine. All right, I'll be back. My cake is cooking. It's almost done. My broth is done. So I'll be making my lentil soup in just a few minutes. All right, my broth is done. And here is my lovely broth. It's nice and dark. When I make things like uh, mock beef soup or mock lentils, I like to put onion skins in there because those will make it more of a brown color but anyway I did not season this I'll season it when I make the soup I need to cut up my vegetables and I'll be back when I'm ready to assemble and cook all right so I'm ready to flavor my broth I just cooked this plain there was no flavoring in and I'm going to put some of this uh, vegetable vegan Gia Rose in. I use this all the time. It has a good flavor. And I'm going to put a good heaping tablespoon of that in. And then also, because this is lentil soup, I want it to have a little bit of a smoky flavor, like a ham base. So this is vegan ham flavored, and this is... Um, Orrington Farms. So I'm going to put in a tablespoon of that. Then I'm going to give this a stir and taste it and see if I need more seasoning. <clears throat> okay, I'm also going to add some of this breakfast blend. This has a really nice earthy flavor to it. And I got this at Walmart. It's Blackstone. It's actually for grilling and eggs and things, but I like to add it to soups. So I'm going to add about a teaspoon, a heaping teaspoon of that. Now this soup is going to have potatoes in it, and when I make a soup with potatoes, I always add a little bit extra salt, because the potatoes sort of soak up the salt. So I'm going to give this a taste, 
and see if it's good. It's very flavorful. So I'm going to leave it like that for now. It's not overly salted. And if I need to add more salt, I will. But I think I'm going to add a little bit of this uh, seasoning for all the things. And I'll put, uh, I think this has salt in it too. Let me see. Yeah, this has salt too, so I don't want to put too much. So I'll put some of that in there too. All right. So that should be good for now. I can always season it more if I need to. Now here I have half a cup of lentils. I don't want to put more than that because I don't really want it to be a lentil stew. So in they go. <clears throat> and then in here, I have some green onions yet that I need to use up. So those are going to go in there. And, you know, I put everything in but the kitchen sink, pretty much. So let me move this up here. Now here I have my chopped up vegetables, and I'm hoping they'll fit. I have carrots and potatoes and some mushrooms, a couple of bay leaves, half a zucchini, a small one. Uh, did I say carrots? And onion. So that's what's going into my soup. So hopefully I can fit all this in. The mushrooms will give it a nice earthy flavor. Oh, I have celery too. But put in there what you want, you know, anything, anything you want. So this is getting pretty full. And I may not be able to fit all these veggies in. But I do want to get some of everything. The rest I'll just cook up. And I think that's about it. So I will add the rest of the potatoes because they turn kind of brown. But the mushrooms and the zucchini and the onion, I can fry those up later on. So I got all the potatoes, I think. All right, and I have this much veggies left and that I can have as a stir fry or whatever. It's kind of hard to gauge how much you can fit in. So this is full, and I'm going to cook this in my little Instapot now. And I will cook that for about 25 minutes. And uh, I'll show you the soup when I'm done. All right, I chopped up uh, that, the last of the cucumbers that I got last week. I got some carrots, chopped that up. I got some radish in here, some garlic, some sweet onion, and some celery. So I like to make this ahead of time and then I can either eat it as it is or I can put it with a green salad and, and make it like a tossed salad. So what I'm going to put in here, I have some of this lemon flavored oil that I've had like forever in a day. So I'm going to put some of that in. Because who doesn't like a lemon, right? I'm not going to put too much in because I'm going to use up the rest of this dressing, too. So, in that goes. I'm going to put in some just parsley. If you have fresh parsley, even better. But right now I don't have any. So, I'm going to put some parsley in. Oh, about half a teaspoon. Just to give it some extra something. And then um, I have some of this lemon and lime pepper. I'm going to put some of that in. And that has salt in it too. And it's a little caked in there, but that's alright. That'll come out like that. 
All right, and then um, I'm going to put in just this little tiny bit of, this is really good, it's tasty. I don't know if they have it all the time, white balsamic and citrus basil. So we'll finish that up. A little of this, a little of that. And then this is some vinegar. Can't remember if it's kombucha vinegar. I think it might be. I don't know. I know it's some kind of vinegar. So I'm going to add some of that too. Not too much because I want to taste this first. So I'm going to shake this all up, give it a taste, and then see what else it needs. And then I just leave this in the refrigerator to marinate. And it's good for almost a week. You know, you can tell when it's not good anymore. It gets kind of mushy and funny looking. So let's give this just a little taste, see if it needs anything else. That's pretty good. I like to let it sit like for a day and then I come back and taste it to see if it needs more salt. So if you have a lot of random, you can use any vegetables. If you have some random vegetables, stick them in the mason jar for a future salad. And then here I also cooked up the mushrooms I bought the other day. These are portabella and white mushrooms. I want to make a seitan out of these. So that'll go in the fridge. And then my candle. I have a couple different colors. I'm going to wait and maybe pour a little more wax in. So far so good. And then I hadn't planned on it but I'm going to make this as a stir fry. All the vegetables that I had that didn't go in the soup. And I'll make some more rice with this. And this will be enough for two or three more meals. So that'll probably be it for the week. I'll have the soup, um, the salad. I have a lot of salad left. And the stir fry. So, and all this food is not very expensive at all. And uh, so that's how I roll. All right, I'll be back. Who knows when? <laughs> when I think of something else to cook. All right, I'm going to cook up these vegetables now that I cut up for my soup that are too much. It's looked scrounging around in my refrigerator, and I found some of this Asian sauce. It came from a packet of porkless bites that I didn't use, so I'm going to use this as the sauce. And I also found some garlic and ginger paste that I made myself. So I'm going to put that in here. And that's been in there like for a hundred years. So I really am trying very hard to use up what I have so it does not go to waste. And especially if you tend to overbuy some things or if you're prepping, you know, check through your stash and make sure that your food is still, uh, that you can use it up. So I think all these flavors will go really well together. And I'm going to season this. I'm really, I'm liking this Asia seasoning. I've had this in the cupboard I don't know how long and haven't used it. So I'm going to season it with that. And it's very, very flavorful. So I'm going to let this cook and see if it needs anything else besides that and the sauce. I'm going to add a little garlic once this cooks down. And I'll be back. Okay, so I'm adding the garlic now. And let that cook for another minute or two. I don't want the vegetables to be too mushy. So I'll just give that a minute. And then I also found in my cupboard, well, I always have these. I buy these at Aldi's, and they're, I think, $12.99 now. They used to be $11.99, but they're um, salted 
cashew pieces. And I'm going to add some cashews to this stir fry because it tastes good. I always keep these. I snack on these and maybe once every six weeks I'll buy one of these. So, and I put them on the salads too. You know, if I want a little nutty taste on a salad. So, but they're good in a stir fry. I've done this before. All right. So now I'm going to add the sauce. And if you have leftover sauce from a Chinese food or from some uh, prepared dish that maybe you, you know, don't use. If you're not going to use it for a while, stick it in the freezer. So I'm just going to put this in. It's still a little frozen, but that's okay. And uh, I think this will be really good. So you can have this with Chinese noodles or rice. You can add some meat to it if you want. Um, or if you're vegetarian, you can add some vegetarian meat to it. There's plenty of them out there. So there's another cheap meal. And uh, this will be enough for at least two meals. So, all right, my friends. I'll see you later. Okay, let's give these two things a try. And uh, like I said, I think I'm done cooking for a couple days anyway. So here's the lentil soup. Now, if you wanted to thicken this a little bit, you could add more lentils or you could um, add some potato flakes or just some thickener like flour. But I wanted a soup this time. Last time I made these, it was like a, a stew. So let me give this a taste. Very hot. Very good flavor. Okay, that is good. Now let me try my stir fry. Now I didn't cook these vegetables till they were mushy. They're tender, but not mushy. Perfect. So, the exact same vegetables in both these dishes, just by changing up your spices and the sauces, adding some uh, vegetable bouillon or beef bouillon, two completely different dishes so you don't get tired of eating the same thing over and over again. So if you want to save some money, I suggest maybe going to the Dollar Tree or to Walmart and choosing their own brand or if you have an, a store near you that's a discount grocery store. Go in and peruse the spices section. Pick up all the spices that you can and become familiar with them and see which ones go together and you can make endless dishes. All right, it's time to go. The alarm is sounding. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. We're at the lake today, and the lake is still partially frozen. And Tom, of course, has to go out on the lake. So there he is. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.